So the open label uh, extension uh, study format is a study that includes patients who had previously taken part in a double-blind placebo-controlled randomized trial, completed that trial, and now have the option to take the real medication during the placebo-controlled study. Neither the patient nor the investigator knows whether the patient's getting medication, placebo, and if medication at what dose. When they go into the open label extension, uh, they know that they're getting the real medication, placebo is no longer administered, and the dose can be adjusted by the investigator like you would do in a clinic, uh, depending on the efficacy and uh, side effects. So uh, the initial study, the original study from which the uh, open label extension study that we're talking about today comes from uh, was the second uh, pivotal study of Cenobamate's use in patients with focal epilepsy. Uh, the study uh, evaluated patients with refractory focal epilepsy, uh, patients uh, who have failed treatments with other medications. Uh, they had to have at least eight seizures over a period of eight weeks. So uh, uh, they had very active seizures. Uh, they could be on one to three anti seizure medications at baseline to which uh, then the treatment was added. In those studies, patients are usually observed for a baseline period when their baseline medication are not changed. Uh, in this study, the baseline period was eight weeks long. And then the patient is randomized to receive either a placebo or the active treatment. In, the, in this study, the active treatment included 100, 200, and 400 milligram doses of synovamate. Uh, they, they then, uh, following randomization, are titrated up to the target dose uh, during what's called the titration period. And then they're maintained on the target dose, uh, whichever group they are randomized into, uh, for 12 weeks. Uh, and in that study, uh, the doses that were evaluated were 100, 200, 400 milligrams versus placebo. And there was, uh, the results were very interesting. Uh, during the 12-week uh, maintenance period, at the highest dose of synovamate, uh, 400 milligrams a day, uh, you had roughly 20% patients who were seizure-free for the whole 12 weeks. Having had, it, as I said, on average, uh, about four seizures, but at least four seizures a month. In fact, the average seizure frequency was uh, much higher than that. Uh, so that was quite remarkable. At the 200 milligram per day dose, uh, the seizure freedom was about 11%. Uh, at the 100 milligram per day dose, about 4%. And that compared with placebo of about 1%. So uh, at the end of this study, the patient had the choice to continue with the treatment long term. Uh, at that time, the treatment had not been approved by FDA, so it is part of a study. Uh, and usually the long-term extension studies continue until uh, the medication is approved and commercially available. And that's what happened with this study. Uh, the uh, double-blind study went from uh, 2013 to 2015. The open-label extension study went then from uh, 2013 to 2019 uh, for the purpose of the uh, study that we uh, did, the analysis were, uh, was cut off at, uh, in July of 2019. Uh, roughly 99% of patients who completed the uh, blinded placebo-controlled study chose to continue into the open-label extension. And then over a period of uh, two weeks, they were switched over from whatever they were taking uh, uh, during the placebo-controlled study, whether it would be placebo or uh, active medication, to active medication. During the study, uh, the target dose was 300 milligrams per day. Uh, however, the investigator and the patient had the choice uh, of a range of uh, doses from 50 milligrams a day to 400 milligrams a day. Again, using a very clinic-like uh, setting where you adjusted the dose depending on the efficacy uh, and side effects. It turned out that the median per, uh, modal per dose was 300 milligrams uh, of cenobamate per day. And the patients were then followed for the, that long period of time. Uh, the median follow-up duration was about for 58 months. Uh, uh, and uh, we were evaluating uh, them for both seizure frequency and side effects. That's the general background uh, of the study. Patients were evaluated for both efficacy and side effects. Uh, one of the important uh, metrics of both is whether or not the patients continue to take the medication. Uh, 
Uh, and so retention of the uh, medic of in the study is a very uh, useful metric because it tells you whether the medication was useful enough for the patient to continue with it. Uh, the at first uh, the end of first year uh, there were eighty one percent of patients who were still uh, on the medication. Uh, at the end of second year is about seventy three percent, and then uh, patients continued with it. Uh, I'm sorry, but the, 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 the first year was 83%, the second year was 80, 71%. And then the patients continued with it, so that by the end of uh, the fourth year, you still had 62% of patients on the uh, medication, which is a pretty uh, high proportion of patients who continue with the medication for four years. And more importantly still, uh, the rate of dropout after the first year, when if you have side effects, you're most likely going to discontinue, uh, the rate of dropout after the first, uh, first year was relatively low going from 71% uh, from, from 83% uh, uh, to 62%. Uh, so that was a useful metric. Uh, the efficacy uh, was very much sustained compared to what we saw during the blinded study. Uh, so we looked at efficacy both in terms of median percentage of seizure frequency reduction, uh, which was about seventy six percent at the end of uh, the four years, uh, looking at the last six month interval, uh, and then we looked at categorical uh, categories of seizure frequency reduction, looking at the traditional fifty percent responder rate, and then the seventy five percent responder rate, ninety percent responder rate, and hundred percent responder rate. These are proportions of patients who attain at least that degree of seizure reduction. So for 50% respond responders, it's 50% uh, seizure frequency reduction and so on. Uh, and the uh, remarkable thing about uh, the study was that there was a very high proportion of patients who reached the 90% and 100% seizure frequency reduction. So nearly free of seizures and completely free of seizures. Uh, and when you look at the patients who completed the study at the end, uh, at the end of four years, uh, this was 16% for complete seizure freedom uh, and 39% uh, of 90% seizure frequency reduction during the last 12 months of the study. When you look at those patients and you look at the uh, duration of seizure freedom, the median duration of seizure freedom was about 45 months. So it tells you that once that A, a significant proportion of patients uh, treated with Sinovimate long term continue to have remarkable uh, effect in terms of either being seizure free or else having a, a uh, very, very uh, pronounced reduction of seizure frequency, 90% plus. And uh, secondly, uh, it tells you that once the patients reach that degree of response, they're likely to continue uh, to have it. Uh, and that's, that was quite, quite remarkable. Uh, the uh, uh, side effect profile uh, was fairly favorable. Uh, about 9% uh, of patients discontinued the medication because of side effects. And the, mo the most common side effects were similar to what we saw in the placebo study, uh, namely uh, dizziness, uh, fatigue, uh, uh, somnolence. Those are the uh, three commonest. Uh, so the, uh, the, the medication was overall well-tolerated, and the efficacy was quite uh, remarkable.